what's going on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all between. Brian, how's it going, man? Fantastic. How about you, Vince? Good, good, good. Welcome to another edition of Sci Fry. And today, the movie that started it all. One of the, probably the, I would have to say, the one movie out of all the movies ever made that's had the biggest influence across filmmaking, games, entertainment, culture. I don't think there's a bigger movie than, uh, a new hope not creating a new genre essentially as far as i'm concerned right um so yeah i i agree because it wasn't straight up sci-fi it wasn't straight up fantasy there was you know it was uh you that's know, why i was careful with my words i was careful space, with my words it's western you know yeah it was you know a, Kar a karasaki movies with you know mixed in with westerns and you know so it's going to be interesting not geek out on this one and it'll probably be like you said it'll probably be shorter than the last one yeah I, it will be because i'm going to poke myself and make sure i don't <laughs> i don't just go off on some random thing so yeah right all right here we go it is a period of civil war rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won the first victory against the evil galactic empire during the battle rebel spies managed to steal secret plans from the emperor's ultimate weapon the death star and space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet pursued by the emperor's sinister agents princess la raises home a aboard her starship custodian of the stolen plans that can save her people and restore freedom to the galaxy nice all right here we go so okay star wars episode four a new hope is a 1977 american epic space opera written and directed by george lucas produced by lucasfilm uh, fourth chronicle chapter of the Skywalker saga, even though it's the first st uh, Star Wars movie. I don't know why they had to retcon the numbers, but uh, set a long time ago in a fictional universe where the galaxy is ruled by a tyrannical galactic empire. Da -da -da. So Lucas had no idea for a science fiction film in the vein of the F Flash Gordon Chronicles around the time he completed his first film, THX 1138. 1971 and began working on a treatment after the release of american graffiti which harrison ford starred in after numerous rewrites filming took place throughout 1975 and 1976 locations include tanzania and l street studios in helfordshire england the film suffered production difficulties because the cast the the crew didn't know what the hell they were making they had no clue on what was going on and they believed the film would be a failure lucas lucas formed the visual effects company industrial light and magic to help create the film's special effects, it also went $3 million over budget due to delays. Okay, so I'm not going to read the rest of that, but... Uh, yeah, Star Wars changed everything. You know, when I was a kid, I thought, oh my God. And it was then that I knew I wanted to make movies. Can't say I blame you. Uh, I mean, it's such a special... Just all of it. Like, I'm going to watch. Like, he, so obviously, I'm, I was not alive when they came out, right? And watching it for the first time, I was captivated, like, just totally captivated by what, what it, what it meant, what it was, knowing that it was significant to so many people. Like, what a, what a cool thing. Like, it, I, I don't know in my I mean, obviously, there's been a ton of movies that I've I've seen. I don't know that one has actively like stuck with me as hard as a single movie like that. The, yeah. the, just, just even talking about four, like five and six, there's a lot to it. But just four is like there's just so many possibilities that came off of that movie, and I love that. Oh right, and dude, who what what little kid doesn't like robots? You know what I mean? Everyone. Every single one. I don't know where R2 is right now. Oh, there it is up there. Um, but every single one. Yeah. And uh, you know, it was just I mean, the whole the whole, 
you know, as time went on, of course, we knew this, this is what's going on. And when they call it the Skywalker saga, I don't think that's really fair because then they try to go away from, you know, it's storytelling. It just happens to be right. on that group of people, you know, but, uh, okay. So here's the story. A farm boy dreams of an adventure and a princess rebels against an evil empire. The fate of the galaxy is forever changed when Luke Skywalker discovers his powerful connection to the mysterious force and blasts into space to rescue Princess Leia. Mentored by a wise Jedi master and opposed by the menacing Darth Vader, Luke takes his first steps on a hero's journey, and that's from uh, lucasfilm.com. But yeah, so it's the hero's journey, you know, and uh, you know this whole thing, you know, he uh, George used to work for Francis Ford Coppola and work for Zeotrope and you know, and you know, he was talking about this I you know, idea during I think it was during American Graffiti. And he said, you know, use religion because everyone can connect with religion, you know, whether it's you know, whatever it is, people can relate to that, you know. So he did, and uh, you know, uh he's also a, a great student of Mark Campbell. I don't know if you know who Mark Campbell is. I do not. Uh, go and watch his, uh, his lectures. He's a mythology guy. Okay. And, uh, he said George Lucas was his best student, but he taught, he was a major professor in, uh, mytho mytholo mythological tales. And especially he was an expert into the hero's journey and how that echoed over time. And basically you listen to Mark Campbell, you can see how star Wars unfolded just by listening to him talk. You know, Hero's Journey, you know, pick someone out of any movie that you watch that you rooted for someone down on their luck. They almost die. They come back. They become the whatever. They save the girl. This happens. Da -da, you know, Shrek. I mean, that's even Hero's Journey, you know. Fair. But, Absolutely, uh, that is. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I had the original Kenner box that didn't have any figures in it for Christmas. So every month they would come in, you know, and I had the uh, the Boba Fett with the shooting dart that some kid choked down and they had to recall him. But as I mentioned that in episode one, but did uh, you keep it though? No, oh, because my mom, whatever, you know, I work for the store that, you know, I work for the company at the store that you, blah, 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 you know, well, that's a buzzkill, Vince. Yeah. She had to make it about herself, but, you know, that's a point off for Vince. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Ma Sidious. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, so right from the get-go. Okay, this was the album cover of Star Wars, the motion, motion picture album that I got for Christmas. And I listened to that thing 500, at least 500 times. Well, I believe you did. Uh, you know, because it... A lot of it's cut out, but however length of it, I love that. Is, you know, so I got like 70 minutes, maybe 60 minutes, 70. And so, interesting. Uh, so I had a lot of the, uh, it was ingrained, you know, and I was an art, I always had a pencil in my hand, so I was always drawn. So as this is going, <laughs> you know, all that stuff's going on and, you know. Uh, Star Wars had a huge impact. It changed my life as a kid, you know. Oh, mine too. I mean, yeah. and it wasn't wasn't new. Still changed my life. Right. Totally. And uh, you know, some things do that. Anyway, so right from the <laughs> dude, everyone gets a fan boner when the 20th century. <laughs> you know that ah, there's that certain it, feeling, man. It's and John Williams. Star Wars would not be Star Wars without John Williams. All of the song choices are are I. This is as perfect of a sound movie, maybe that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Every aspect of it. If we're if we're talking about the the battles, the all of it, so good. Every little bit of the sound aspect. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I went to a workshop once and it was the sound designer from Star Wars. And so we got to see how he made the 
the laser shots and how he made the um or the uh lightsabers and then the laser blast shots and that's cool the you know the tie fighter and so he'd bring everything up. it was and he had his you know midi board there and explaining how he did it there and he had some footage and stuff so that was really cool. anything star wars related i mean i worked for the director and uh his claim to fame is that he edited the star wars the original trilogy um trailers cool and he got a uh, you know he had a multi-decade career decade uh <laughs> it's a facade it's a facade um but you know multiple decades as a commercial director because of he edited those three trailers amazing i mean the the impact that it you know and i don't know how many people went to hollywood because i mean i was one of them you know because no. of that yeah and i be wound up I want to became uh I went out there to become a cameraman. I wound up being a special effects guy, then worked for a documentary film company that went up to Lucasfilm and we interviewed George, George Lucas. And I was like, ah, but I'll tell that story uh maybe an episode uh the next episode, but okay. Totally cool. So enter Vader. You know. What a presence immediately yeah, right the get-go you you feel you feel the bad if that makes sense like yeah. you you feel that there is b bigger than bigger than the screen that's that's what he is find those rebels and i want them alive i mean i love that sound and i want them alive it's you know, and you're like as a kid you're like holy shit you know because we never seen anything, you know, you're four or five years old getting, you know, or seven, eight, whatever. At that time, you you know, you didn't see anything like that. It was a moment, truthfully. You know, definitely. Uh, so C-3PO and R2-D2 uh, wind up going uh, to Tatooine. And uh, C-3PO is always like, no more adventures. <laughs> So I think my big thing is the beginning of that movie. There's like a, there's like a huge droid scene, just them wandering by themselves. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, what a what a what a bold choice. Like, truthfully, what a bold choice that was. Like, I, I give him all the credit in the world because it is awesome. Rewatching it, just watching them, just yeah. Do their thing. Yeah, and everyone's thinking that other older. Oh man, the the sand's gonna get in their gears and all this shit, and it's gonna right. bump up the joints. And you know, it's awesome though. Like, oh it, yeah, I, I forgot because it's it's not short. Just the two of them doing their thing, and I like thinking back. I can't imagine going to a theater not and really knowing what was going on and being like, "What is this?" And then it turns into a whole thing. Like, and, and to me, that is, it is very Western to me. Like, right. very, very Western, the start of that movie. Um, well, and it's also very Japanese cinema. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, know, the, like it, you know, the the two samurai walking, you know, that's how they start. They're in the middle of nowhere. They just got out of something. They're fleeing and, you know, through happenstance. Yeah, you know, I agree. The story unfolds. But uh, I'm not a fan of the CGI added shots, man. They really bother me. <laughs> so <laughs> you watched on Disney Plus, yes? You could say so. So in, once again, all caps, I have special edition dislike. Like, I, right. I get it. I appreciate the fact that they care enough about the movie to add stuff to it like i don't need some of the stuff that they added like some of they i mean they added stuff too and oh, i yeah. just don't i don't need it like I, so what was it like 96 98 is that when they came out with the special the special edition vhs to raise money for the new trilogy right so i i, I dislike it probably even more now than i did before um you like there is a particular scene where the falcon when it's blasted out of tatooine shows up and it's like all right 
I know it didn't look like that when this movie was made. Like, you can make it look nicer without doing it is what you did. Like, I, I didn't need the extra little bit. That's just me, though. I, we could be wrong. I don't know. You know, but what an imposing, you know, presence on screen, you know. Oh. Fills up the room. Yeah. David Prowse is Darth Vader. Unbelievable. Yeah. I never never seen a villain like that until this. No. And uh you know, like in you know, all types of you know and this is like in a time when you know King Kong movies and Godzilla movies and all kinds of you know um monster movies were coming out. But you gotta give him credit, man. The opening shot is the best opening shot in any movie ever. Oh, I agree. And it's try it's most certainly people try to duplicate it all the time. Oh yeah. Not not to this effect, but yes. Like what a what a start. You know, like there you can see the the separation between the, the model and the rotoscoping from the the old movie, you know. Mm. But anyway, yeah, not a fan of the added CD. Uh, so, okay, so then there's uh, Jawas uh, selling droids. Uh, I love that there's a lot of shadows in this movie. It's not flooded with light like the episodes one, two, and three, even though they really four, five, and six. But it wasn't flooded with light. Yeah. A lot of darkness. Yeah. Oh. Dark, not darkness, just not Absolutely. well lit. Light. Yeah, yeah. Everything right. was bright and shiny. It was right. Yeah, it was dark and and that was, you know, probably a budget choice too, not to show certain seams and you can hide stuff in shadows. But uh yeah, so uh the rebels in the empire, uh R two D two whistles like Ixnay, like shut up, dude. Like <clears throat> about the hologram, you know? Yeah. Like Ixnay. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's something going on with R two D two. He's he's uh he, he's bigger in the story than I think people realize. Well, I'm sure we're gonna find out once we get to 10, 11, 12. Because the droids have experienced everything in all nine movies. Right. You know, and more. Right, yeah. They're always there. They're they're the constant. Yeah, and Star Wars was originally, what was it, uh, the Diary of the Wills? So okay. the, the Wills were people who wrote the story of Galaxy, you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Oh, the Chronicles of the Wills. Okay. Is what it was supposed to be called, the Chronicle of the Wills Star Wars. And so you wind up, you don't wind up meeting the Wills until way later on, 30, you know, 35, 40 years later in the storytelling. But uh, I think that R2D2 is a will, a will soul is in R2D2 circuits because the force works differently from when they're from. So I believe that uh, there's a reason why R2's been around. And he's been and, around longer than C-3PO. And seemingly never gets hit with anything minus... Yeah, he's got the the, the damnedest luck, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> so that makes sense that he's like force, like a force-sensitive droid or something. I or, agree. Or even magic, and he's basically... He knows what, you know... He's probably lived through this three or four times, three or four different galaxies. Who knows? And I think you're actively right on that. That sounds right. Yeah. And then Leah shows up on the hologram. You know, oh, I think I've found it. Um, well, sorry, that's Luke. Oh, who's that? Tell me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So, uh, um, I don't know. So, uh, Obi-Wan has mentioned the droids, you know, Meant they start talking and uh, Luke's like Obi Wan Kenobi. I don't know who that is. I wonder if they mean old Ben Kenobi. Well, <laughs> holy shit! How'd you make the connection there, Einstein? <laughs> wow! And you said it out loud. Yeah, yeah. They once again, teenager. Uh, they've got that. They've, seemingly, George has got that part down. Right. 
Oh my god! And when I, you know, when I was a kid, man, the coolest thing ever was the land speeder. Yeah, I mean, I digged it. Um, it's it's kind of weird because I, you know, growing up, I was in between, right? And I saw those first. I like the pod racer more than the land speeder, and I can't believe I'm saying that out loud, but the land speeder is cool. Pod racer is just faster and more fun. So fair different different grow up with it so yes yeah um yeah i'm trying to i'm grabbing a picture real quick all right so the land speeder was the coolest thing ever you know because you know we didn't you know the other things didn't hadn't come out yet you know and it bugged me actually that you saw a speeder bike or whatever in uh episode four when they're walking into the uh the town sure um but yeah come on who didn't want uh, one of those amazing they actually remade that a couple years ago for kids um dude this i had so much fun with this toy dude i, I have the 19 the remake version of it i don't have the original Look at that. It's got, look at the glass. You see, it's like both parents smoked. A hundred percent. And it was always on the living room floor. Oh, so yeah. it got everything. Yes. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Incredible. But uh, yeah, the land speeder. Um, then of course the, uh, you know, so Luke goes out to look for the droids or Luke and C-3PO go out to look for R2-D2. And then, <laughs> fucking sand people. Oh, sand people. I am not a fan of sand people at all. Not even a little bit. They are so, so obnoxious. I don't like sand people. I don't, I don't I actually, yeah, no, I like Jawas more than sand people. So we're good. Yeah. Yes. Are, I, they, the, are they the most, um, uh, are they the most annoying, like, character like oh uh, no nah, yeah you're right yeah you're right uh, yeah the other gungans aren't like that it's just that one <laughs> <laughs> sand right. people are a lot yeah so uh so that ha so you know about the scene right where he goes huh, huh, huh. Mm -hmm. you know that that's rolled up backwards and forwards backwards and forward because they only had one little shot of it so i didn't if you look at it, you can see the they're going back and forth at the frames. Interesting. But, uh, then we get Obi Wan for the first time. Well, hello there. I love that shit. And then Obi Wan's like, "Oh, these are the most loyal droids I've ever seen." You know, no knowing, yes, right, knowing that he fucking went through a war with both of them, right. You know, and he, how can you not know it's those two droids? You know what I mean? Come on. It's cool. Is it R2D2 doing the. Beep, boop, boop. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Yep. <laughs> but uh, then uh, C3PO uh, shuts down, takes a rest. And then Obi Wan explains the uh, Anakin story. You know, I know your father. We served together in the Clone Wars. Do you know my father? Yeah. So what do you think about that whole thing? So, in my opinion, right, we've got the your father died in the Clone Wars kind of thing. Um, I like that um, because, <clears throat> to me, Anakin did die. Right. And right. like, we, we know that now, I mean, like even looking, if, if, if you're looking at four without the past, like, Oh, your father died in the clone wars. Like that, that could mean a lot of things like, right. You know, so like somebody's dead to me and that's kind of it. And I, and I like it more. I, I liked it a lot more like recently. Like I did, we did three and four, I think on the same night. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I was hoping to do that to see the dichotomy, you know, the differences between, you know. Right. And and I and that made it a little bit more fun as far as I'm concerned. Like yeah. I, I really enjoyed the this to this, 
right. knowing that there's the gap in between and like filling in some of the little things. And I think, I think George did a pretty good job with that. Like, yeah, you know, and that's, looking, another, that's another, the, because of that, that's why we're recording um, these episodes ourselves, like the way we two at a time, because I wanted to get the first, the, the last of the one and the first of right. the next, and it works all the way down. Yep. So you could just so you could see the differences in time jump and you know big, feel writing. Yeah, big big fan of like the little things you pick up, knowing I'm sure like obviously George George wrote the movie. He doesn't probably have to rewatch it beforehand, but he really channeled in well that some of that three to four stuff that I really like the second like watching that one back to back. Yeah, because there's a lot of payoffs that we didn't get right. the first time around, or maybe we didn't watch, you know. But to see them, you know, because you forget about certain things. You're like, oh, yeah. You know, and then uh, enter the legendary Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin. You know, and he's like, fair will keep the local population in line. Still does. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, same idiot bitches about Vader. Um, and then it's, I find your lack of faith disturbing. Yeah, wor workplace violence for us all to watch. I love it. Right, look at that. <laughs> and that's probably like on his, like, uh, whatever, OK Cupid profile. <laughs> look what I can do. Uh, that was menacing to see as a kid. You know, like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. That guy just force choked someone. Yeah. You're me. Absolutely love, yes. Yeah, and then of course, meanwhile, <laughs> you know, R two's getting carted off by the Jawas, which those things scared the shit out of me, man. When I oh, hundred percent. You know, hundred percent. Because there was what was the Karen Baker's trilogy of terror was like the scariest movie from my childhood, and that reminded you know, you know, with their glowing eyes and stuff, and you're like, mm. they're they're oh, creepy little guys. Like, no money, you know what I mean? Like. That's a brilliant move. Yeah, they're they're like uh, little small people gypsies. Like that's that's right. how I look at Jawas. <laughs> the funniest line though comes when uh, um, Obi Wan Kenobi is talking to, to Luke, and this is as you know as R two's getting kidnapped and you know and C three PO for by the Jawas. Funniest line ever. The Imperial stormtroopers are very precise. They can't hit anything to save lives, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And then, uh, you know, of course, they find... Uh, what happens? They go back. They find the Jawas are dead or something. Um, I'm... So, yeah, they show up, and the Jawa station, the ship, whatever it is, is destroyed. Yeah. And then Luke comes to the conclusion... That, that that will lead them back home, right? And then I I'll, I will say this is amazing. Um, Luke just straight up leaves Obi Wan behind. Like yeah. we 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 oh, don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, like like Luke, don't go. And he's like, nope. I am straight up Anakin raging back to where I grew up, and I'm gonna leave the Jedi, and I'm gonna leave the droids. Like, yeah. come on, man, relax. Relax a second. Um, so yes, that's where we go next. Yeah, and then uh, Luke returns <clears throat> after seeing uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt uh, Veruca, Veruca, Aunt Veru, Veru, and they still didn't paint the fucking ceiling. True. Um, so Luke returns, and there's a you know C three PO is putting uh, dead Jawas onto a funeral pyre. You know, so he goes from burnt bodies to them burning bodies. You know, it's kind of brutal to show the uh, the and they're Uncle in Owen. Jedi robes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that's a precursor, or you know, like a hint to Anakin or uh, Luke's past through Anakin. Yeah, fair. But uh, then they have to go to Mos Eisley spaceport. You'll never find a more wretched hide of scum and villainy. <laughs> Love it. Sounds like the Vegas of uh, the Vegas of the desert. <laughs> These are not the beers you're looking for. 
Yeah, not a fan of the added shots. They stick out. I no, they stick out like a big old sore thumb, man. Oh my god, you know. And then there's multi layering. Well, let's see how it works with you know. Oh no, no, yeah, it's not. It's not ideal. The little like the little creatures running by and stuff. It's like I get it. I get it. You can do more things now. Just give me yeah. what I had. Then it does the whole these aren't the droids you're looking for scene. Mm -hmm. Most size the cantina. Uh first thing you see is old scrotum face. And uh, you know, he starts shit with Luke right away. And then in the original, he had a claw hand. And when Obi-Wan came and chopped it off, it was a hairy hand, and no one like what? No one really understood that why that happened, so they fixed that in the got uh, it. This, but uh, yeah, Han, Chewie, and Greedo. Oh, who shot? Greedo shot first. Greedo shot first. <laughs> that was like a big did. thing, man. That was like a huge, like you know, it was a campaign. It was, you know, they did it pretty smart. You know, pretty smart. Not but. Greedo shot first. Vince, who shot first? Han Solo. Greedo shot first. All right, that's fair. The, the smart warrior would have shot first in that situation because he knew the other guy had the high ground, technically. <laughs> and then again, I've got the high ground. <laughs> I'm telling Yoda. <laughs> but then we see uh, uh, ja uh, Jabba the Hutt and uh, Boba Fett. Yeah, I, no, no on the Java thing. The Java was not, that's not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so these were, uh, so that was supposed to be the original, that was the guy in the shots on the left. Okay. He, he was, uh, he was the guy that Harrison Ford was talking to and they put Java over him. Okay, fair. And uh, here's a uh, another. Des uh, this is a design that was uh, declined. Yeah, I can't imagine why. For Jabba the Hutt, right? Well, if you look at it very close to the uh, the beast that is that we see in Episode Two. That's fair. Underneath Jabba's, and this was also another design. No, the, Jabba. the the Jabba is perfect. Yeah, and they did wind up using this in the Clone Wars. Uh, the, the I like the the what six Java because three Javas like seems like a lot happened to Java in three years or, or whatever many years it is between right. all those. Um, but yeah, I mean, great character. Just we didn't need to do that. Right. I mean, I guess that it establishes the fact that they've known each other, which I get if we're telling that whole story, as I said, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, but yeah, don't love it. Um, sorry, I just got to uh, respond to this. It's the kid. Okay, yeah, so Jabba, and, uh, you know, I just think it looked horrible. Oh, yeah. It looked, you know, the eye line again with Harrison was off, and then he stepped over the his tail, and it looked way out of place. And they kept on tweaking that every two years with new releases. You know, they'd take the other, you know, special edition gold plaster, you know, <laughs> platinum master. Yeah, what, 2014 version, 2017 version, yes. Yeah, but, uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, when Leah talks to Grandma off talking, I realize I thought I was, you know, what was it? I recognize that foul stench. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, always, whatever. But, uh, you know, he always, uh, in during the, all his scenes, he wore like red velvet slippers. Interesting. Because he had like back issues or something, and they gave him okay. these boots, and he's like, nah. He's like, I'm going to wear this. You're not going to see my legs. So that's awesome. funny you can see pictures of him in his uh uh what you call it um slippers yes thank you yes but uh yeah so great disturbance in the foss is what obi-wan says as the uh 
Now here is weird, but when you know with Vader, like uh, when he's in the room with Leia, and they've got that black floating, yeah, the needle thing. Vessel. Yeah. yeah, whatever happened there? Then he like bailed, and he's like, oh, you know, she's not talking. Yeah, I. So I'm assuming that they tried to drug her, and she's just too strong to, yeah, give anything up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so yeah, then he's like, oh, there's been a great disturbance in the force. When, uh, oh, it's an Alderaan. <laughs> yeah. They're peaceful people. She lied. Terminate her immediately. Well, there might still be some use for her. Like, yeah, how no did, shit. How did, like, if he's such a great Jedi, how did he not, like, get the vibe that that's his kid? We, we had that conversation as well. Yeah. Like, he would probably get some weird vibe and feel right. Padme or something. Yeah. And then uh, Han Solo was like, I wouldn't rely on any hokey religion. It's no match for a blaster, kid. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, what that's a... Right. Greedo's giving you the eye. That's fair. What a what a hunk Harrison Ford is in that movie. Good right. God. Da, 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 da. Hunk. Hunk a hunk of burning Harrison. But that was cool, like, uh, like oh, a hologram. Like, that's way cool. Yeah, you know, the cool. is just perfect, you know? Oh, 100%. Um, let's see here. I love you. I know. <laughs> um, That's no moon. That's, that's no moon. Space station. I've got a bad oh I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> yeah. Vader feels the presence he hasn't felt since. <laughs> that always annoyed me. I don't know why. Like, dude, you just stop mid sentence. So yeah. I think to me that that is a really, really cool thing knowing the story. Right. right. So if you're just going into four, you're like, uh, okay, you've known him for a long time. Cool. Haven't felt him in a while, whatever that means. Right. But the whole backlog makes it so much cooler. Mm -hmm. So much cooler. It'd be interesting to watch all the Star Wars and Chronicle, like all the series and other movies and just to get a cohesive you know. That's what I'm actively trying to do. I mean, it's going to be a little bit hard because I'm trying to watch the movies that we're talking about, but I'm actively trying to get through, like, started Andor again, or for me, right. um, with the Obi-Wan thing. I'm trying to get it as much in order as humanly possible, yeah. um, which is really fun. Really, really, really fun, actually. One of the most classic shots in cinema. Like Absolutely. this image is burned into my head. Like not, so is this one here. Classic, you know. Oh yeah, a boy and his dog. Basically, Absolutely. Peter Mayhew, you know, played Chewy uh, incredibly well. Um, you know, and uh, that's no moon. It's a space station. No, but. Uh, yeah, so they get pulled in by the uh, tractor beam, and uh, by the time that they get there, they've changed the files, and basically they're hiding out in the smuggling spaces. Uh, that saves them from initially getting nabbed. The old switcheroo, and then the uh, stormtroopers come up. Hey, we need a hand in here. Next thing you know, Han and Luke have the stuff. And they should have like known immediately because all the stormtroopers are clones. Oh yeah. And then you look at Luke and Han and they're like they're like, you know. Luke. Nowhere close. Yeah. Yeah. Like that should have been the old uh but uh old Ben tells uh tells Luke the Foss will be with you. Always. Their last their last conversation. Yep. And you like kind of knew with the tone that that was gonna be the deal. He's in it even as kids, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. But uh, uh, Luke and Han are arguing as R2-D2 finds the princess because he's Force-sensitive. Telling you. Uh, 
And then uh, they have to go to uh, what this the something dock level five AA two three is where they're being held hostage. And uh, where are you taking this thing? Is what they say about Chewbacca. And they answer cell number one one five eight like THX. Thought that was pretty good. Or one one three eight, I should say. And then uh, the princess is rescued, or the princess rescues them, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, I think it's she helps quite a bit. Yeah, and then uh, Grand Moff Tarkin talks shit about the Jedi's. <laughs> you know, yeah, dated religion. You know, you're the last of them that remain. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Never underestimate a Jedi. <laughs> But yeah. uh, Leah, yeah, uh, Leah blasts the wall open. Of course, lands right in the trash compactor. That scene, that scene terrified me as a kid. Yeah, and you know what, dude? It's so long. That scene, I like skip, skip, but skip. It is get it. very long. Yeah, and you got three PO. Oh, they're dying! Like it's a yeah. All right, we're everybody's dying. You got a three PO. Right. <laughs> oh, two. What about Master Luke? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could be worse. Three PO, three PO. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the uh, the droids escape, uh, and they save everyone last minute, of course, in the trash compactor. Obi Wan <laughs> notices the bait. It's so, dude. This is so funny. <laughs> like Obi Wan, no one can see you. Yeah. Yeah, the the him looking back over like that's exactly what that felt like. Yeah, and then what I don't like about okay, then the next Han next uh, shot Han and Chewie are running, you know, around the corner into a whole garrison. They change that, <clears throat> and they go into the other room, and there's like twenty two hundred. They totally screwed that up. There was 20. And, and then there was a the lot pacing, more. The pacing just worked a lot better. The joke worked better. You know, like they took the air out of the joke. You know? Yeah, no, that, to me, that's a um, one of the more standout scenes to me is like Solo just running hard at all of them. And it's like, what is he doing that for? Right. And then, then it's like, oh shit, the, the track back is my favorite because who hasn't been in a situation like that before? You're like, right. yeah, I'm going to do this. And you're like, nope. I and I want to know what they told him was really going to happen on screen because he's like almost ducking. Yeah, fair. You know, I'm like, well, was it supposed to be fire that's they were going to comp in or something or, you know. It, it works perfect, though, still. Yeah. And then it goes to uh, Luke and Leia for the famous Tars, uh, Tarzan oh. swing. Okay, uh, I got a problem with that whole thing. <laughs> when 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 did the 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 stormtroopers get a fucking utility belt like Batman? You know what I mean? They had a batarang. They're like, why 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 are they so bad at shooting? They're the most precise. <laughs> I, I I like I'm not listen. I I get it. I it's, uh, I understand. Once again, we this is probably the third time out of three or four that I've done this yeah. is. Like, I know it needs to be a movie, and you know it needs length to it, but, like, dude, they're not even close. And then Luke's just, like, around the corner, like, and, like, hitting them and knocking them off. And these guys, who it seemingly is that's their entire job, yeah. are not even coming close to hitting him. And Obi-Wan's going, like, I'm looking for the tractor beam. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah, so she kisses Luke for good luck. He throws in a knuckle. Um, yeah, Vader awaits Obi Wan for the saber battle. Uh, you know, so after shutting off the uh, the uh, tractor beam, Obi Wan goes into the theater and, and Darth is, you know, waiting there with uh, you know, with his red shiny um, the Padawan becomes the master, yeah, the Padawan becomes the master, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, so this scene 
as far as first time seeing it, amazing. Rewatching it, <laughs> I don't I don't know that 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 lightsaber scene is as good as some of the others. It's still good. Um, that's not what I'm saying, but it's like you could tell it's you know it's a guy winding down versus a guy who's like full of rage still. Right. Like you feel that I think me watching it that's how I felt about it. I was like, "Huh, yeah, that that, that checks out." Um what about you? Well, I was you know obviously, you know, what's funny is I think Ewan McGregor now is the age that Obi-Wan is in this movie. Yeah, not not quite there, but yeah. <laughs> like no, I think they are age-wise, but I don't think they look anywhere close to like. Oh, yeah. no, because it's just a different, you know. Yeah. But uh you know, there were some weak moments for sure. They didn't have the Jedi fighting style down yet. You know, um, also they're in enclosed space, so they had to fight a little bit differently because the ceilings are low in that. Believe yeah, me. I think um, I did. The one thing I will say I appreciated about the special editions, this is the only thing I'll say I appreciate about it, is they didn't change how the lightsabers looked. Right. That was really important to me. Yeah, so like when I watch it, there's a couple of shots when they're pointing like this, and it, it, you can tell it's not the regular lightsaber, right? Other movie, and I'm very thankful they didn't change that. Yeah, um, because that would have been, while probably optically great, this still that to me that is a Star Wars feel you can't screw with. Yeah. So and then uh, you know Luke and company make a run for the Millennium Falcon. They look over. He's like, Ben? Yeah. Ben, I've known you for four days. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hi, <laughs> ah, ah, Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. yeah. So then, then Obi-Wan goes, zip, zip. and here's the thing. Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader wouldn't have just taken him out on a punk move like that. True. Like, you know, Vader would want to earn the kill. You know what I mean? So that was kind of, kind of odd. Like now, after knowing their history and stuff, right? You know, then it made sense when you didn't know anything about them. But you know that that just uh, you know Ben stands down and Vader runs him through. You know Luke shoots the blaster doors, and that was always a menacing scene because oh, oh my god, now he's gonna get Luke, and he just looks huge on screen, Darth Vader. And um, I I will say I appreciated Darth Vader poking the robe, like what's going on here? Um, it, right. I don't. He's like, oh, that shouldn't be how that goes. Um, and then also like I I get it once again. What you want to tell me? A lightsaber can't cut through that battle that blast door? Right. <laughs> well, it can. Yeah, as we saw the uh, leader of North Korea. Yes, uh, we absolutely did. Do that in episode one. Then when they close the blast doors, it's like, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's certain things that don't make sense from movies to movies, for sure. They're like, oh, that person just gained that uh, gained that talent. Yeah. Or whatever right. it was. But seeing the, uh, you know, now knowing that Vader was Anakin, that kind of, you know, Puts a different spin on things, you know. So Han and Luke get into a dogfight with the Tie Fighters, and uh, that that was always my my favorite scenes was the spaceship stuff and you know the dogfights World War Two that they copied and you know totally but makes sense that that's how they did that. The uh, nothing will beat the Family Guy um, red buttons here. Like when they're when when they are going through the red squad, oh my god, so good. Uh, red leader standing by. Yeah, yeah. I actually got to interview Red Buttons on that documentary that we interviewed George Lucas. That's also very cool. Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, Perry White from the Christopher Reeves Superman, something Cooper. Gig, uh, anyway. Speaking well, of yeah. Superman, speaking just real quick, did you see Flash? Yes. Ooh, okay. Yes, I saw. Okay. Some interesting things there. 
We I can watched it that later. If you yeah, want. I watched it on Saturday, and uh, I got some vibes from Flash. But anyway, go, go back to Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh, R two downloads the plans uh, from the Death Star. Uh, Luke again is ragging at Han. You know, yeah, Yo, take all the money and all you want. Yeah, and <laughs> we don't need yeah. this stupid help anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, but I'm not a grandmaster. <laughs> yeah, so same kind of thing. And then yeah, Chewie, a lot of parallels. Chewie pipes in. <laughs> you know, Red Leader standing by. Uh, Biggs is added in. That dude that he grew up with. There's a scene where, you know, fell. Yep. Like, you know, eh, that, that one I didn't mind because it made sense. Yeah, no, I like that actually a lot more this time than I remember liking it. Yeah. And then, you know, they're flying out. They're going out there. Duh, 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 duh. And then you, Luke, trust your feelings. You know, as he puts on red tube. Uh, yeah, so Han saves Luke. And uh, Vader spins off. <laughs> the spinoff thing never makes sense to me. Like, he's no. got, he's so powerful. He should just be able to be like. Well, he could go. Anything to stop moving like that. Right. Like, I never, anyway. But right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then the uh, the Death Star is destroyed. Yeah. So I, I do need to actively talk about this. How the hell are you going to build this space station that apparently took 18 years and then build in a self-destruct port, essentially? That's a pretty big design flaw. Like, pretty big. And mind you, I'm calling back from that third movie hey, where they have the Death Star started to be built. It's only as big as a swamp rat. <laughs> yeah, just cover it up. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Those that's how they're supposed to look. Yeah. In all their glory. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, so then uh you know, see at the end, Leia's looking all sexy. She's, that she's white beautiful. dresser. Yeah. She's and dude, beautiful. what a Carrie Fisher was not only talented, she was funny as hell, dude. Oh, she's amazing. Everything yeah. Carrie Fisher has ever touched is absolutely amazing. Yeah, she is she is my princess forever, that's for sure. And then we get to the da, 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 the celebration scene. So I have a weird thing that I noticed this time. What the Chewie got fucked and didn't get a medal? Sure, that could be one, but um, there was more ships that came back, and the only people that were standing there were Luke, Han, Chewie, and Leia, and there was like two other ships that came back. Where were their medals? How did we just decide that those were the those were the recipients? So yes, it's essentially the Chewie didn't get one either, but there were more ships that came back. Like, oh, well, they got it's politics. They got to make it about the princess, and you know, only her. You know, you know, I, okay, with her. You know, it, it was just it was a weird thing for me uh, when I rewatched. I was like, hang on a second. Now, some of that could maybe no, it wasn't even special edition. They're all invested in the same oil company. <laughs> Damn Exxon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Palpatine oil. <laughs> But yeah, so R 2s back all cleaned up. Uh, what I did like about the the redo or whatever that special edition platinum gold seven nine to the fifth version is, uh, they made R two really beat up. Yeah, you know, really beat up. Parts missing, like okay, that's cool. Yeah, you know, that made you invest a little bit more. Not our R two. I will gladly give any spare parts that I have. Right. <laughs> oh, if I could, if I could, uh, I would gladly donate any gears to spare parts. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, the celebration scene like they have in a lot of the Star Wars movies now, but it always pissed me off that Chewie didn't get a medal. Yeah, that's like fair. Specious. <laughs> Chewie deserved a medal. Oh, absolutely. Always upset me. Chewie didn't get a medal. And then, of course, you know, everyone's happy. The day is saved. And, you know, we'll move on to uh, next week. I think next week's film is probably one of the best ones. 
I think it's the best. Okay, I'll side with you. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, I'm a big fan of that one. But uh, yeah, you know, George uh, told a story. He he got burned out after shooting this movie. There was so much stress, and like he wasn't even in the country when this came out. He was in Mexico with Spielberg. He had a hundred and thirty eight dollars in his bank account. And he thought, like, oh, my God, the movie's going to tank. And, you know, here we are. Doing a podcast about it. Yeah. <laughs> In the next millennia. Yeah. But, uh, no. yeah, so that's uh, A New Hope episode episode four. And then, of course, you know, we see that. And the two moons. Yeah. Like we saw in the uh the episode prior when uh luke is dropped off as a baby that exact right. shot you know and of course you see uncle owen in this exact shot uh but yeah pretty cool um definitely one of my, the favorite my favorite movies of all time because, yeah i think i mean how can you how can you not yeah no i mean it's it's probably top three villain of all time is that fair yeah i would say so as far as a fact i mean who's bigger barbie no i'm just kidding <laughs> who's, who's a bigger villain joker uh nope no i don't uh, think uh, not as far as effect on cinema fair uh, i'm just talking like king kong yeah, that's fair. That's a good one. Uh, you know, you, you said it earlier, Godzilla. Yeah, Godzilla, Terminator. You know, Joker's up there for sure, but not. I don't think Joker's in the top three, top ten. No. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Because he came from somewhere else, this was designed for the screen. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. But uh, I think we did a good job of not geeking out too hard on this one. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to geek out on this movie. Well, I think we're going to geek out on the next one is what the deal is. Well, that, well that's, that's, that's We wanted to ease, ease people into it gently. <laughs> cool. But overall, man, it's uh, this is a game-changing piece of cinema. Oh, totally. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you think about it, you know, all, all, the, all the best movies – ensemble movies all have seven characters seven samurai you know um the magnificent seven star wars uh the avengers uh you know justice league they have seven you know or at least maybe not movies but you know comics and all that right for some reason the dynamic of seven works because you could have so many subplots within the the seven people but you know dude i'm telling you this was the best toy <laughs> I'll have to find my I was remake like, oh, of it. The hood opens, no way. But anyway, really good toy. <laughs> All right, so yeah, overall, um, one of my favorite movies, and uh, definitely a game changer, like you said. And uh, <clears throat> so many of the people who are now big directors working are working because of this movie. So, oh yeah, that's a pretty uh, pretty good uh, legacy to leave behind there, Mister Lucas. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, this episode of Sci Fry. And uh, Brian, buddy, have a good one, man. You too. I'll, I'll see, see you guys. You guys next week. <laughs>